Hi, Karen. Happy belated birthday yesterday. And it's, as always, so wonderful to see your beautiful face. Katie, thank you so much for the belated birthday wishes. I love getting belated birthday wishes because not that you didn't also wish me happy birthday on my birthday and send me a very thoughtful gift. I feel like every day that goes by that I get a birthday wish extends my birthday outward just that much more. A hundred percent. I completely agree. It makes me think that we should not stop saying happy birthday ever. Like six months from now, it's like, it's going to be your half birthday. Like, why not? Also the entire month of July into August, still Karen Hawkins birthday month, months, all of the above. I guess we can just make our own rules. Exactly. And there's such a thing as an unbirthday. Remember that from Alice in Wonderland, Mary unbirthday? No, what's that? Did you ever see the, di- the, I think it's the Disney Alice in Wonderland. There's a song, a very merry on birthday to you, to me. <laughs> like, oh my God, I need to go on YouTube and find this immediately. Also loving the singing. <laughs> is You're it welcome, un- everyone. <laughs> is it an unbirthday because it's not your birthday or is it yes. like, okay. Oh yeah. It's like, I think it's the Mad Hatter is like, you only have one birthday, but you have a 364 unbirthdays. Oh, I kind of yeah. like that, actually. I, love I do. It. That's really great. Maybe I'll just sing to myself. Merry, <laughs> merry, merry unbirthday to me. To me. <laughs> <laughs> at any time. At any time. That is really cool. I love that. Okay, Karen, I am dying because <gasps> I, I re-listened to our podcast and uh, from last week, and I had said that I was excited to go to Willamette Valley to go wine tasting, but more excited to hear about your trip. And that is still holds up and so like (laughs) please i have been waiting for now a week and a half i can't wait to hear how was van life all of it oh my gosh katie i'm so excited to tell you because it was fucking awesome i really Really? mlb knocked it out of the park i gotta say like in terms of like partner birthdays like i feel like the bar has been set very very high oh that's so good that's so great i'm so happy for you that's wonderful So this camper van was a 2017 Mercedes-Benz Airstream Interstate, like Mercedes and Airstream, you know, like Airstream, like, yeah, those fancy trailer drop. Yes. Like they did this series of like collabs on vehicles. And so it's like a, it's a, it's a camper. I mean, that sounds like you were at a Four Seasons on Wheels. So that's amazing. Seriously. Holy shit. Talk about classy as hell. So good. It was great. I mean, what it was also funny about it, I feel like was very surreal for me was I have watched so many hours of van life, tiny home, alternative living videos that I got in there and was like, oh, yeah, I've been in one of these before. No, I haven't. In your brain, you have, though. Like, yes. in your imagination, you have. Like, you know every single knob. You're like, mm, that's working perfectly. So glad. Like, you know all of it. Right? <laughs> oh, my God. I was asking questions. So, like, the guy we rented this thing from, I'm asking him questions. And MLB is looking at me like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you know? <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, that's a Max Air fan. And that's a Dometic and whatever. Yeah, it was really... It was an addiction. We cooked in there. Oh, it had a shower in it. Oh my gosh. It was great. Wow. It's so, how was like, so the bed's in the back, right? Like I know so little about this. And then there's like a couch or something that's like in the main area. Take me through. How does this work? This one didn't have a couch. It did have a queen size bed that I was strangely very, very comfortable. Fabulous. And it had the two like chairs in the front, obviously like captain's chairs in the front and then two chairs in the back that I think maybe fold down into some kind of business that we did not mess with. Got it. And then it's got a kitchenette that had a propane stove, a sink and a microwave. Wow. And a refrigerator. That sounds full service, honestly. I mean, it really was great. And then yeah, flush toilet, shower. It was fantastic. And so we picked this thing up and then I didn't know where we were going. So oh yeah, surprise. the whole blindfold and... sitch. Yes, exactly. We did not go with the blindfolds because I knew it was going to be too. I was like, I'm not sitting here blindfolded for however many hours. And fair. Um, at the hour three mark on the road, I started to feel like, what is happening? 
oh my god we're going to mexico <laughs> I know, right? like, what is actually happening i feel like we were like a little probably three and a half hours away and we went to drum roll please Brrr, mammoth cave national park in beautiful southern kentucky oh my gosh stunning it really i i cannot say enough good things about that experience it was absolutely stunningly beautiful there wow that's so amazing what a badass plan for mlb to do like to go it's like you're not going to like a beautiful area in in like outside of indianapolis no you're going to a national park just no big deal that's incredible oh my gosh so wait so did you park at like a campsite or like what ended up happening and were you able to see stars so we, yes. Okay. These are such good questions. Okay. So yes, we parked at a campsite and again, MLB has magical properties because I mean, how are we to know that like we're in a van at a campsite, it is 90 degrees at night. Oof. And in order to run the electricity, the van needs to be on or the generator has to be on. Oh, well, you can't run the generator after a certain time because like, so we had it on and MLB walked around and texted me like, oh my God, turn it off. You could hear it. It was just like echoing <gasps> the sound of this thing was echoing through the whole campsite. Oh shit. It's like, oh, it's them. It's them. That's <laughs> exactly right. It was like, oh God. So we had to turn the generator off. Oh my God. We were so sweaty. But the next night there was one campsite that had a plug available and it magically opened up the next oh, night. Good. Okay. Wait. Yeah. So if you have, so the generator is clearly like external, right? Like, is that like, but then if you don't have a plug, you have to use the generator, right? Like that's exactly. And it's just stored power. So it's got solar panels on it. It's stored the power, the generator just like gives it to you without having to be plugged in or without the truck having to be on. Got but like it. the plug is so wild. It's just like this giant, <laughs> just like a plug that you'd plug into the wall and it plugs into the van and you have power. That's wild, Karen. That is wild. Okay. So you roasted the first night, cool as a cucumber yes. the second night, yes. but then were you able to stargaze like from your campsite or did you have to go to like a field or like, how did that work? Oh my God. It's so funny. I'm um, all be thought of everything. I, did I mention the transparent tent? Oh my gosh, no, but you texted it to me and I was like, I looked at it and I was like, that's a teeny tiny tent. It almost looks like you're trying to like cover a buffet of food <laughs> from like mosquitoes. And I was like a large buffet of food, let's be honest. But like, you know, I was like, what? And then I'm like, oh my God, I wonder if that's for stargazing. Yes, it is a tiny, like a decent sized tent. Yes, but it is transparent. Intended for stargazing. We didn't end up using it for that. We ended up using it for rain. So we went out to like the check-in place. Okay. That's kind of a field to see stars the first night. And then it rained the next night. Oh, well, did you get to see okay. stars the first night? We did. And do you just like lie on the ground or like, what do you, or do you just like sit there and you're just like, oh gosh, this is really cool. <laughs> you're just standing up. This is yeah. really cool. Yeah. There you're you go. <laughs> We're so tired. When I've gone before, I feel like it's more of a to-do, but this was like, all right, we got to, it's so late. We got to yeah. set up. But yes, we did see, I did see stars. I am very excited about that part. And That's it was a so whole experience. Cool. Like the oh, whole, the yeah. campsite is like in the woods. And then the caves were wild. Really? Like oh, I, yeah. I went to Mammoth Cave when I was like 11. Oh, no way. I, I have very I, I honestly don't think I have very many um, memories of it the only thing that I remember was stalactites are the ones that are like 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 those like things in the in the cave like they go down or they like I don't know they're but they're going down from the ceiling and then stalagmites are the ones that are coming up from the the ground like they're like mighty I don't know I might be wrong Ooh. about that and so whoever's a cave expert listening might be screaming in there airpods but i would love to hear about your experience because i i have very little memory i mean it was so long ago 30 years more than that oh my gosh i i had never been there so we only did we did the self-guided tour of mammoth cave nice but there are apparently 426 miles of caves oh my god really wow and they think there are 600 miles that they haven't found yet what 600 I... miles they haven't found wait okay so 
are these, this might not be the right question, but these are underground caves, right? Like that's what, or how, that, yes. Which is the freakiest part of it. Yes. Like, so you go down this giant staircase, kind of like you're going into the subway. Oh, it's the only thing I can compare it to. Yeah. And then you're in this cave that, oh, by the way, is 54 degrees. Oh, okay. <laughs> the surface, like I said, was 90. So we got down there and I was like, oh, man. Oh, <laughs> frozen solid all of a sudden. <laughs> what the hell is this? That's your but generator. That's a bummer. <laughs> but, oh, my God, it was the coolest thing. It just, it's massive. And, yes, all underground. And the freaky part is that, like, the I mean, that means the entire state of Kentucky basically has these caves underneath it and which is also why they have a lot of sinkholes there which oh really that's a thing yeah. yeah oh like sinkholes like people just fall into the ground like quicksand like um the ground will just give way and then your house isn't there anymore oh wait you're being serious no no yeah 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 like oh, my God. i mean i think it usually happens when the ground has been saturated with rain or something has happened but like yeah no that just that's fucking terrifying are you kidding me that's what i said oh my god if there's a sprinkle we might die today like what no oh gosh that's horrible i feel bad for people in kentucky i wonder if there are areas where they don't allow people to build houses because of that like holy shit i mean that sounds so fascinating though like and then that is that also connected back to alcohol but like is that back connected Mm. to like aren't there caves for like whiskey caves or like bourbon stuff? Like, I just wonder if like during prohibition, they used mammoth caves or any of the other 600 miles of caves they haven't found yet, like for storing alcohol. I don't know. I'm making this up now, but I'm just like imagining that this could be a thing. I'm sure it was a thing. I'm sure it was a thing because there was a railroad under there. Oh, what? would take you from, I think it was from Louisville to Nashville. Oh my gosh. And like they, you could stop in mammoth cave and- it was like a tourist attraction and it was like <laughs> MLB was reading the descriptions better than I was, but apparently it was just like Bill just this like death defying thing. Cause you're underground. Of course it's the 1800s, 1900, whatever. And something happens to you is pretty much over. Oh yeah. Like I'm sure carbon emissions were not really a consideration <laughs> back then. <laughs> like you might get some CO2 contact. I mean, Oh my God. Or like, you know, what is it? Carbon monoxide. That is terrifying. Also, that doesn't exist anymore, I imagine, because there's no ventilation whatsoever. Oh, God. Actually, that's a really good question about the ventilation. I don't know. I mean, the air was really clear down there, I have to say. Okay, that's cool. That's so fun, Karen. Like, how awesome. Like, to be able to, like, be in a van. There's so many, like, boxes that have been checked on this weekend. Like, be in a van, go to a new national park, hang out under a clear tent when it's raining which by the way sounds incredibly romantic like what how was that did you just watch the rain oh yeah oh that's so cool that really makes me want to go on amazon and get one of those clear tents that's really cool that's just and then you're not you're away from like the bugs the whole thing it works yes exactly oh yeah totally wow i'm a big fan i highly recommend any of these things i have a coworker who's randomly going to mammoth cave this weekend oh nice that's cool Wow, this is like the hot place now. I had no idea. Wow. It's lovely. That's so cool. I'm so happy for you and MLB to have that experience. Like, and then would you ever rent another one of these Mercedes Airstream van oh, things? A thousand percent. Yeah, no, totally. I can't wait till we do it again. It was so much fun. Wow. It's so cool. Would you ever want to live in one? Like, would that, did you like it that much or like what was your read on that? I would love to have one to take day trips, like to do trips like that, to like be able to go to national parks or even state parks and not have to sleep in tents. Totally. Yeah. I would love that. I mean, especially the whole electric hookup thing. Yeah. That's nice. That's really nice. And the whole mattress thing, the whole queen size bed thing. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's nice. And to have your own personal bathroom, like that's a big bonus. Oh man. Running water on demand. Yes. Yeah. Hell yeah. And I'm sure that you, it was like very like, you know, all inclusive, I imagine, like you you pick it up and then you just drop it off. Like you don't have to dispose of the, all that, or did you? Oh, you did. Well, I don't. Okay. So this is one confusing thing I will say. And then, oh my God, I want to hear about the wine and oh my God, we still, and it's okay. We we have, we have all the time. I'm just, I'm I'm in spacious time mode. (laughs) Okay. okay, All right. Um, 
we did end up having to empty the tanks. I will not get into it, but yes, we now know what a gray water tank and a black water tank is. It's fun. Got it. Got it. Yeah. 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 That, that part kind of makes me not want to do it, but I know it's probably fine. Like it's, you know, it's just, you get used to it. Absolutely. It was not as gross as it sounds okay. at all. It was not gross at all. Well, uh, that's mm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was not that gross. It was not that gross. It was not okay. that gross. <laughs> that's amazing. I'm so happy for you. My weekend was good too. We, it was actually really, really fun. Like we went up to Willamette Valley, which is like the wine region of Portland. It's the Pinot capital. I know I mentioned that last week. And like, it was great. Like it was five couples and we arrived, um, like right before dinner and they had gotten like Mediterranean food and we ate. And then the next day we had a, um, like a van that we had taken that took us to like, I guess it was three different wineries. And one of the wineries had a, like a picnic situation in the middle of a vineyard. It was ridiculous. Like it was so beautiful. And like we brought the people that we went with are very big into like hospitality, everything. So they know like all of the, like, they're basically cheese plate Olympians. Like, they're like, <laughs> seriously, I cannot make a cheese plate like these people. Like, it's so impressive. And so it's like, that was the level. That was the whole weekend. It was just like cheese plates and like, you know, like little bites here and bites there. And like, let's go on a hike and let's do this thing. And it was just, it was really lovely. The whole thing was great. Mm. Well, the best part though, Karen, was that a lot of these people, like the, the couple that it was my friend Jamie's birthday, they're very close with us. But a lot of the other people there, like, we know them. We're not, like, super close, but we've gone on enough of these, like, weekends away that we know them. But um, it was really nice because it was, like, very lighthearted. Like, the mm. whole time, everyone was just shooting the shit, joking around, just, like, everything was so lighthearted. They kept, I mean, there were a few serious conversations, but nothing major. And it was, like wow like I nothing was heavy I was like mm -hmm. this is amazing I was actually really quiet because I didn't know what to say because I was like how do I not talk about all of my feelings all the time <laughs> so I was like I really was I was super quiet and then but it was so entertaining because I was just like I'm just gonna sit back and let this like really delicious small talk wa wash over me while everyone laughs, laughs about random shit it was so lovely it was kind of like i've been reading too many self-help books like this is the analogy i haven't actually but you get it like reading yes. too many self-help books and then all of a sudden i just need to read some romance novels like i just need to like give my brain a break you know what i mean yes i know exactly what you mean that sounds amazing oh it was great it really was it was and it, the best not the best part but one of the best parts was it's a three-hour drive it's no big deal oh. and so like we got there in like late afternoon on, on um friday and then we drove back and we were here early afternoon sunday it was like nothing yeah, that's oh, great. Love that. Yes, that was exactly what we did. Yes. Almost. Yeah. Right? It's like, it's nice when you don't have to like carve out time too much in your life. Like, it's like, if it's not the right time, like, it's still nice to have it, that you can't take a bunch of time off. It's like, it's nice to have just something chill. So, yes. Yeah, it was great. I'm glad we both had good weekends. But okay, I know we don't have a ton of time. So, let's get into your topic because I'm so here for it right now. I, I'm really interested. It's probably a good thing that we have to, we have to be brief. So, uh, listeners, unless you've been living in, I don't even know where you were aware that there is a Barbie movie out right now. Ryan Gosling, Margot yes. Robbie. Yes. Issa Rae. Fine. I don't really know. I, I don't watch enough television that I've seen a lot of ads for it. I have never seen the trailer. Haven't seen any ads for it. Just, Same. you know, just kind of like out there in the world. Uh, but my workplace was talking about doing a story about it. Like, should we do something on this? And someone referred to Barbie or I guess the way that it was framed was like, should the story be, is Barbie a feminist icon? Wow. <laughs> wow. I just, mm. okay. Well, please continue. Um, How did you feel when that question was posed? I, <laughs> really, I did almost choke. I was like, what? and I, I didn't respond on Slack because yeah. I just, I have a big mouth and I get in trouble. So I just didn't say anything. And I was like, I'm just going to see how this unfolds. Hmm. So Smart. we haven't done anything yet, but it was, it has stuck with me. And I was just like, oh, I need to talk to Katie. I know who I need to talk to this about this with Katie. I mean, okay, so I so appreciate you bringing this up because I have been seeing 
I don't know what it is. Like just, I'm not even on social media. So like, how am I seeing all these? Like, but there's some sort of promotion that is flashing a lot about this Barbie movie. Like, I don't know, maybe it's like when I'm watching Netflix or it like comes up or like, it's like the next thing, but that's, I think it's in theaters only. Anyway, I'm with you. I don't understand why I know that this is happening, but it's definitely happening. And also I have not seen a trailer either, like any of those things. Okay. So here's the thing. I think if there is an argument for Barbie to be a feminist icon, I have completely missed that story. Like I, like I, my experience with Barbie, which I did have Barbies as a kid. Like I, I, I just never once did I think feminist icon. It was more like, oh, this is the quote ideal, like the Kate Moss, you know, like dangerously skinny, not actually a real person's body. I like it's just, and then like she always seemed to be serving Ken. It was like, what part of that is feminist? I don't like I, none of it seems feminist to me. But I'm also like open to fighting with someone about this, not fighting, but like hearing someone else's opinion is really what I meant. Um, because I might not know the whole trajectory of Barbie. I mean, I've been out of the game for a solid almost <laughs> thirty five years. So, <laughs> like, yeah, same. Right. I also had Barbies. I was very excited about them. I loved playing with Barbies. I loved that like other friends or relatives had like other members of the Barbie family. So we totally had Skipper. We all, you know, Skipper. would God, I forgot about Skipper. Yeah. Skipper, right? <laughs> like and we could like pool toys, like somebody inevitably had the camper and the Malibu play house I don't even know all this shit right like I think yes. I had the, the car she had a convertible oh. I know so the only thing that I can think of and the person who raised this at work I says so is a little younger I feel like post us playing with Barbies Barbie started to get jobs oh really yeah, like I feel like there was like an astronaut Barbie and a presidential candidate Barbie. I'm making that up. RuPaul's Drag Race Barbie. I don't really know. But I oh. feel like Barbie at a certain point stopped being like just my job is being Barbie to like actually. <laughs> They're in an office doing doing a having a real not a real role. I Motherhood is a real thing. Like that's not what I'm trying to say. But yes, like. Yes, like having, like they were different versions of Barbie that like she had like actual jobs. Okay. Well, that's good. I mean, but also like I still am, I still think it's massively problematic. Like I like, because yeah. also like at least when I was little, there was only one, Barbie only had one ethnicity, white yeah. and blonde. Like that's it. Like there was no other representation whatsoever i think that did change over time didn't it i i feel like i had a black did i have a black barbie i feel like i did have a black barbie did you oh, oh my god I? i'm so glad that 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 existed at that time well here's the thing though it was just white barbie with darker skin like her uh, features weren't she had the same hair like it's not like mm, she didn't have locks right like black yeah. barbie didn't have braids she had it was basically the other Barbie just a brunette with darker skin. But I feel like I did have one. Mm. I'm going to look that up. What year did Black Barbie come out? I would totally be interested to know. But also, why is Barbie becoming big again? Or is it becoming big again? And Margot Robbie, I mean, yeah, she's a great actress. But like, come on. Like, you're just like perpetuating the, you know, 1981 type of... I, I mean, know. like you were saying with the whole body image thing, like my memory of Barbie as adult, when I was an adult and would think about her, was like whoever did the math on like, if she was life size, if she was like people size, she would fall over because her boobs were so big and her oh, waist was yeah. so small. I forgot that her boobs were big too. Oh my God. Barf. Seriously, barf emoji. Like that is what I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I mean, definitely a white man created her. I mean, that's, I, I don't actually know that for sure, but I'm, I would venture to guess quite a bit of money on that. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, 
I do think that Barbie, like, it's hard for me to have a positive spin, frankly, on Barbie. I mean, it's cool to have dolls that, like, people want to play with. Like, I get that. Like, th there's a lot, there are a lot of other dolls in the world. I'm not sure why Barbie was the one that kind of stuck. Uh, I don't know. Also, Ken was just like this, looked like a frat guy. Yes. Like, from the mean frat oh yeah you know totally I mean? like from yeah Ugh. uh yeah i don't again i haven't read enough analysis of of how this all came how this movie came about or whatever but yeah barbie was a problematic figure in my childhood because i feel like yes she was idealized and just validated this idea that if you did not look a certain way you were not worthy yes completely and like it just I don't want to blame Barbie and Mattel or whatever the company is for like perpetuating, you know, like eating disorders, but come on. I mean, come on. Like that's yeah. And it's like the connection between Barbie of the nineteen eighties and filters of today on Instagram, like that's a pretty direct connection, don't you think? Like it's just Oh yeah. Ugh. Like, I also remember having dolls when I was a kid where, I mean, these, like, I would have been younger than Barbie age, but, like, they would be have, like, the head that was, like, really hard plastic. And then the body was, like, I don't know, like, it was, like, fabric, but it was, like, stuffed with a bunch of, like, I don't even know, like, plastic or something that would make it puffy. Like, it was a puffy, it's it was a puffy doll. And it was, like, there's no real definition in the doll's figure. And it's, like, I just think of this from, like, a body acceptance perspective. I didn't give a fuck. I was, like, great, this is my doll. I'm carrying it around. Like, it's, like, who cares? And it's, like, I, it never even occurred to me to think, like, oh, I want to be, like, that puffy doll. You know, I don't know. I'm just... <laughs> Why couldn't we have stuck with those dolls versus the big boob, tiny waist, you know impossible not, it's like not even an anatomically accurate no and it's non-job having like i had the daytime nighttime barbie she was like in a suit and then you could take off the jacket and it turned into this like camisole situation wow. what the fuck was she doing all day yeah great questions and also you had a lot of great you had a better barbie than me i had a hot tub with barbies <gasps> and i had like so the hot tub yeah so i would like put it in my sink at my house and then i would like pipe in water and then it would like squirt 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 and then i had like her little kids and so then i would like wash their hair anyway that was really exciting for me as a kid <laughs> <laughs> but like but I didn't have like a day and night Barbie, which by the way, maybe I wonder if this had anything to do with your fat, your love of fashion, Karen, and like <laughs> what can go from day to night. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. Perhaps I, uh, I'm going to, I'm happy to unpack that. And <laughs> I just, oh my God, something about the hot tub. Maybe you remember like that GI Joe was like, and then like there were people who had didn't have Ken dolls like boys didn't have Ken dolls like if you oh, played with yeah. boys or had male cousins right they didn't have Ken dolls no they, they had G.I. Joe. Joe and I feel like there was something about the size difference between Barbie and G.I. Joe that was very problematic and I'm trying to remember what it was I, I thought G.I. Joe was like two inches tall yeah, right, right, and right. what wasn't <laughs> Barbie was like a foot tall like that never made any sense to me I mean my brother had G.I. Joe's and he would like just run around the house like making like psh, 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 noises and then like he would like launch them off the stairs and then they would like fall and pretend they were in battles so like there was not a lot of yeah he wasn't like worrying about their outfits or anything right <laughs> Like, but how will this transition into night? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Does this G.I. Joe have a camisole that will be really workable? <laughs> okay, I love this conversation. And this is kind of making, well, no, I'm not going to lie. I don't actually want to see the Barbie movie. I was just going to say this is making me want to see the Barbie movie. I, I don't, I wouldn't mind someone else seeing it and telling me how good or horrible it was. Um, but yeah, do you want to see the Barbie movie? I want to see Issa Rae. Can you just, can somebody just like clip together all the scenes with her in it? I don't care if they make sense. She's amazing. What is her role with? with I have zero idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know at all. I'm so confused. She's so brilliant though. Like in real life, it's like, 
I'm sure that like there's a reason she signed on for this movie. Like that gives some credibility to me. But there's know. probably several million reasons. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> I hope That's... I hope at least a couple million reasons. <laughs> I hope many, many millions of reasons for you. Isa, who are, is definitely listening to this podcast right now. <laughs> oh my god, I would absolutely interview Isa Ray. Holy crap, that would be so exciting. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is really fun, Karen. And thanks for bringing up is Barbie a feminist conversation? Um, listeners, we're here for it. If you have opinions, let us know because I don't know. I really feel like maybe I'm like missing out. Like maybe I I missed, I mean, I definitely missed all of the 90s and 2000s with with uh, Barbie. So maybe there's something super incredible and social justice focused that I don't know anything about. So <laughs> social justice Barbie. Yeah, social justice Barbie. Exactly. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. Well, this was so much fun. Thanks everybody for listening. We'll see you all next week. <laughs>